Hi there, I'm just putting more data on my phone. That should do it. In our past three episodes of the Beach Boys Hits Retrospective, we talked about the original trilogy, 1966's Best of the Beach Boys, a big success for the group, and one that proved that Hits packages would be a marketable venture. 1967's Best Volume 2, a minor hit, not really living up to the expectations, but not an outright failure. In Best Volume 3, an outright failure, both critically and commercially. Enough to make Capitol Records realize that the Beach Boys might very well be a has-been act. Wasn't worth it for them to invest any more in this group. Today we're going to take a look at their first attempt to reboot a Beach Boys hit series. We'll look at the much forgotten, much disregarded 1970 LP, Good Vibrations. Good Vibrations is mostly irrelevant today. It, this, this album, not the song, of course. Uh, this record is the first one on this list that if someone said I had to cut down from 19 the number of episodes I plan to make, this would be the first one to go. There is very little to even say about this, and it left virtually no impact on the Beach Boys legacy. But I did include it for one very specific reason, which we'll get to at the end. Let's start as usual with our track list. Side one, Good Vibrations, I Can Hear Music, In My Room, Sloop John B, and The Girl from New York City. Side two, Heroes and Villains, Surfer Girl, I Get Around, California Girls, and Barbara Ann. Most of those songs, not all, but most, appeared on Volumes 1 through 3. So if you were a collector in 1970 and bought this LP for your Beach Boys library, chances are you probably had all or most of these songs already. Let's get some context. If you remember, when I talked about Best Volume 3 in the last episode, we mentioned how 1968 was a very bad year for the group. All three of the LPs, including this one, were big flops. The only thing that really kept them going through 68 was the success, both in the U.S. and worldwide, of the single Do It Again. The 1969 LP, 2020, fared somewhat better, was a moderate hit, and did produced a decent charting single. I Can Hear Music, top 10 in the UK and other parts of the world, about number 24 in the U.S. It's the back of 2020. Enough to keep the group going. But there were so many legal issues going on at this time. The Beach Boys were ready to sever ties with Capitol Records due to various money matters and royalties and something that would be a whole video in and of itself. And the last record they'd release for Capitol in late 1969, early 1970, was Live in London, their second live LP. This is a 1971 reprint. I don't have an original, unfortunately, with the original art. Uh, that album, or this album, I should say, was not released in the U.S. until the mid-70s, about 1976, where it was released as the Beach Boys 69. Don't laugh. And that, I think, is a clear indicator of how little... Capital thought of the Beach Boys at the time, to literally withhold an album to only release it in Europe. And that was the last album done for Capital. Usually, most people say it was released to fulfill the contract. They had a set number of albums, they were done. And the Beach Boys would shift gears and move to uh, Warner Brothers' reprise label and use their own, own record label, Brother Records, to release Sunflower in 1970. Although Sunflower is widely regarded as one of the group's best albums, it makes those top 100, top 500 album lists all the time. It's got a huge following, and it is a very beautiful album. Uh, it was not a critical, or it was not a commercial success, excuse me, it was a critical success. It was a commercial failure, barely charting. And the Beach Boys were desperate to kind of change their image. And Sunflower, of course, went through years of, or maybe not years, but certainly a long period of developmental hell with all these different ideas bouncing around. The group really didn't have any direction going into the 70s, and signing with this new label, doing new types of music and so on, was probably a very daunting task. Of course, we can hear a lot of the outtakes and things like that on Feel Flows. Here's the little Feel Flows, the two-CD set. 
But that, I mean, records like this or albums like this just show how, uh, how much trouble the group was in, really. Capitol still had control over the Beach Boys' older songs, the material they'd done in the 60s, so they could keep pumping out these hits packages without too much trouble. They didn't have to get the Beach Boys okay, so this was their first attempt to do that, to see if they could still sell older Beach Boys music, even while the group themselves is off with this new record company, doing kind of new and different things. So let's talk about the composition of Good Vibrations. Almost everything on here is a charting single. Really the only exception is The Girl from New York City. That was it from 1965. It was the opener on the very successful Summer Days and Summer Nights LP. This was the first track on there. And I think it was included because people would remember this album. So they'd buy this and be like, oh yeah, I remember that song. That was the first one on there with the weird intro, that kind of thing. I like The Girl from New York City. It's a cool song. It was written as a reply to The Boy from New York City, but it's a completely different song. It's not like they just switched the pronouns around or anything like that. And also, this album uses the LP version of our favorite girl, Ba 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 Bran. Here's the inside of the party album for it. Barbara Ann was the ending to the party album, and as a big sort of closing coda, they redid the ending of the song over and over again, each time getting louder and sillier. They kind of match with the tone of the record. So we get the full version on this Good Vibrations LP. The previous uh, Volume 2 release had used the more popular single version, the one that you'd probably hear on the radio. Certainly more likely to hear on the radio. There is one thing that Good Vibrations takes from its immediate predecessor, Best Volume 3, or predecessor, excuse me, predecessor, Volume 3, and that is it tries to be career-spanning. We have some oldies on here, like Surfer Girl, In My Room, then we have some kind of mid-60s hits, I Get Around, California Girls, Barbara Ann, excuse me, then we have some Pet Sound stuff, the Sloop John B., some smile slash smiley smile stuff, good vibrations, heroes and villains, and then their newest big hit single, I Can Hear Music, which, remember, was on this record and had been a big success for the group, one of their most successful covers. Not one they do regularly in their live sets, and uh, not one I think that's like a household name, but it appears on quite a few later collections too. So they had old to new, everything in between. So this works really well as kind of a quick sampler of their hit-making period. That being said, the songs aren't in chronological order, which is kind of strange. It does jump around quite a bit. But there is an attempt at order because it opens with good vibrations, so the eponymous track there, and it closes with the big Barbara Ann finale. So there, even though it's not in order, there was at least some kind of plan going on here. This is a European copy through Emmy Disc. The U.S. copy is a little bit different. The title is stylized differently. Instead, this big orange and blue box, we have, like, it just says Good Vibrations in yellow and has the song list. The actual cover picture here is basically the same, um, except uh, just things are moved around at the top, that sort of thing. Nothing too crazy there. Notably, Brian Wilson is nowhere to be seen on this cover. The other guys are there, but not him. Very interesting. The record itself is the same as the U.S. one in terms of content. Real quick, I'll just show you the label there. Emmy Disc. I think this is from Holland, I want to say. I'm pretty sure. This was a lot cheaper for me to buy than an American copy, so I went with it. I like that Emmy Disc yellow label. It's pretty cool. Let's do back in there. Back in there. There's a lot of advertisements for other groups on the back. You can see the Animals, Pink Floyd, Shirley Bassey, the Hollies, artists both old and new. There is one other Beach Boys release mentioned on here, Beach Boys Oldies. I looked that set up. It was only released in Europe, and it's a very eclectic set of songs from the early 60s up through about 1968. A very strange 
set with like Wild Honey and Friends and Surf Jam and South Bay Surfer and all kinds of stuff there. I'm not quite sure what the story was with that. Some of the songs weren't really that old at the time. So why would it be an oldie set? I don't know. This record basically lived and died on vinyl. It briefly got a, uh, or an 8-track release in the United States, but it never charted, never really caught on. Some other countries, like Australia, got it on cassette or even CD much later, but for the most part, this was one and done. This record was not what the buying public was looking for. I really like the review on the Beach Boys Online Guide that says, this started the trend of pumping out hits compilations like they were going out of style. Oh wait, they were. And this was, you know, it comes off as kind of a cash grab, but I think there's definitely some effort here to make a good record with well-known songs and then sprinkle in some stuff that's maybe a little more modern or maybe not quite as well-known. They tried. I'm sure if this had been successful, it would have spawned many more. It would have had Good Vibrations Volume 2. And that's really the reason I included it. This was a reboot attempt that if it had succeeded, would have changed the Beach Boys' image, could even have changed their current careers. They were starting to go into all new territory, completely different types of music. If an oldies hit, or an oldies hits package, I should say, if an oldies hits package had been successful, they would have gone back to oldies music. Speaking of which, the next album in our series, our next episode, will be about the most relevant and important hits package in their entire catalog. And we'll see how that same situation of a hits package with one type of music and new releases with a different type, we'll see how that goes the second time around. But for now, I'll leave you with just a thought about this weird curio. You know, what could have been if this had been a success? Who knows? Do you have this album, or have you even heard of or seen this album before? What are your thoughts on random one-off cash grab hits packages? Please do leave a like and a comment, and I hope to see you again next time when we find out just how long summer lasts. Until then, my friends, go out and uh, catch a wave. Thank you.